What's going on, everybody? This is Nick Lawson from Squad Sports. We're really excited to be supporting the Free Agent Friday series. A lot of great talent out there. Without further ado, this is the next free agent you should be signing with your sports team. All right, we're back for another Free Agent Friday, and today I've got Chelsea Bingham with me. Thanks for joining me, Chelsea. Absolutely. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. So let's um, start off with, um, tell us where you went to school and your degree that you got. Yeah, I am from born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana. I went to Ball State University where I studied sport administration with a focus on marketing and management. Like at what point did you decide you wanted to get into sports? Um, ever since I can remember, I've always been the type of person that like wanted to be in the business of like fun and making people happy. Um, my life is surrounded by sports constantly. I have an older brother um, and that's pretty much the only way I could ever get him to hang out with me is if you're <laughs> doing something with sports. So um, the sports industry is one of the most unique but perfect avenue for fun and making people happy. Definitely is, that's for sure. Um, how about when you were in school, did you do any internships? Yeah, um, my first internship was outside of the industry. I worked um, in the hospitality industry. There is a resort in Southern Indiana, uh, French Lick Resort, if anyone has heard of it. Maybe not the resort, but probably most famously known because that's where Larry Bird is from. Oh. Um, there's a four star uh, resort down there, a little hidden gem. And I worked in the special events department as an event coordinator for, for the resort. Oh, nice. That sounds like a lot of fun. How about um, on the sports side, anything there? Yeah. Um, after I graduated, I moved to Minnesota and I was an intern with the Minnesota Wild in their game presentation and special events department. A uh, year after that, I moved to Pennsylvania uh, and worked for the Harrisburg Senators in their community relations and marketing department. And about seven weeks before the pandemic hit, I moved to New York to work with the Binghamton Rumble, Rumble Ponies for another internship. Um, but I think at that point, we all know how that played out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's uh, affected way too many in our industry. Um, so kind of getting back to, so it looks like, you know, a lot of your stuff is kind of in the community relations, marketing, is that kind of, you know, your focus that you're looking for? Um, in a way, yeah. The, the beauty of sports, and at least how I've been able to, in my experience, depending on what level of sport you work at, you can wear multiple hats and do multiple things. So uh, there is a big section of my experience that is marketing and CR focused, but also game presentation and special events wise as well. Um, I'm really fortunate that I've thoroughly enjoyed all of those aspects of what I've worked in. So um, I'm now working on with whatever positions I take next, kind of narrowing it, at, narrowing it down to become more specific, but marketing, CR events, game presentation, either of those is something that I'm looking to continue with. Well, I'm definitely, you know, being with some minor league sports teams, I mean, it definitely is multiple hats. I know that <laughs> firsthand. That's, I'm with a minor league baseball team here. So, um, you know, and when you get into the major league, it's, yeah, it's very, specific so I had the blessing of working with a specific department that does one thing but they also allowed me the opportunity to volunteer so I did get to go see other departments and then I've also done you know minor league double a baseball where I've worked in almost a bit of every department so <laughs> I have experience with both they both have pros and cons and they're they're both good for you yeah so what's your dream job then I would say I would like to do special events or promotions for a community relations department or a foundation, a team's foundation. Again, it kind of just depends on what level um, I end up at. What um, skills do you bring to the table? I really pride myself on my willingness to learn and understand. I am the type of person that will always ask questions along the way, but it's never to just get by. It's because everything that I go into, I truly want to understand and be better at the end of it. What area do you think you need to work on the most? 
trusting my gut and getting out of my head. Um, I tend to be most successful when I trust my intuition and I'm working really hard at practicing that more. Yeah. Not overthinking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it just takes some time. It just takes some time. So let's talk. I mean, I know you're only with the uh, rumble ponies for a few months, but um, were you starting to work on any projects there or anything specific that you're proud of that you were a part of? Ooh, um, so during my time there, I really practice a lot on my graphic design and social campaigns. Um, my supervisor, while she was there, really was great about letting us be on an equal playing field with her. Uh, I was able to take on new projects in the short time that I was there. So I dove in a lot with Photoshop um, and helping schedule social media campaigns uh, and the graphics for that as well as designing some of the outfield uh, wall advertisements. So you actually have design skills as well? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kind of programs and technology have you used? Uh, Adobe Photoshop, uh, okay. mostly. I have experience from while I was in school with Premiere and InDesign, uh, oh. but mostly in specifically the bulk of my experience comes from Photoshop. How about any video experience at all? Or is it all just on the more print and um, it's mo In my most recent uh, experience, it is print-based. But when I was in high school and in college, I worked uh, digitally in like Adobe Premiere doing video stuff. So it's okay. something I've been trying to look for the right opportunity to maybe learn a little more, but haven't found that avenue yet. How about when you were with um, Harrisburg, the Senators, any projects specifically that you were part of there in the community relations side? Um, I was thankful enough that the Senators, each year they gift the CR intern with the Kids Club and allow you the opportunity to own it and grow it. And that way it's uh, ever changing every year. When I was in Minnesota, I had worked with the Kids Club, hosting and scheduling events, facilitating the database and uh, the packages and stuff like that. But a Kids Club with 800 members across you know, multiple states and areas of the country is a lot different than double A baseball. I was able to get really close with the kids and the parents and the grandparents in the club, uh, interact with them every single game day and really put my personal mark and stamp on the program while I was there. Very nice. What um, kind of separates you from from others? Like what, what would really kind of separate you uh, when you're going against somebody else as far as for a job? I always express my willingness to truly learn and grow. Um, and that's been very beneficial to me in every single place that I've gone. I also am not afraid to take risks. I've moved three times in the past three years, taking on new responsibilities uh, in new departments every single time. So I have a proven ability to adapt, but also to learn and be reliable. So are you, I, you kind of said it, but I take it you're open to relocate um, for, for a that's position. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's good. part of the fun. It's the beauty of the biz. It's one of my favorite parts. I, I always enjoy kind of going to a new city where you don't know anybody, you don't know anything. And, you know, every city's kind of got their unique little flair. So yeah. I'm a travel bug. So this, um, this pandemic has really, really hit me and not being able to travel and do new things. And um, I was really looking forward to being in New York and learning from that new, new environment. Tell me about living sport a little bit. Cause I see your, um, you know, a co-chair there on the alumni board and you've done some other stuff. Tell me about that. Yeah. The living sport program, I am forever indebted and so grateful to be a part of it truly launched my path in this industry. So living sport is an international sport business program. It provides current college students and young professionals with the opportunity to travel abroad, work with an international sporting event, but also learn about the culture uh, in that specific country that you're visiting. And during that time, you are traveling with other sports industry seekers, college students, and mentors that are working in the industry. So um, while having fun abroad, you also have uh, resume workshops, interviewing uh, workshops, you're working 
events abroad and navigating all the challenges with that. And when I traveled in 2017, I stayed connected through my network um, with my mentor and the founder of the program. I've continued my work as an ambassador. I then worked as an alumni relations assistant, which I've absolutely loved being able to work with all the alumni of the program. And as you mentioned, I am the co-creator and co-chair of the Loving Sport and Alumni Board. That's sweet. That sounds like a great program. I was just kind of looking it up recently. So I was like, wow, this, this looks amazing. And then when I saw it on your LinkedIn, I was like, I have to ask you about it. They would not be where I am without it. And I can say that for a fact because my um, supervisor at the Wild said that this program was the reason why I got hired. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's definitely, it's a small world when it comes down to it, like, especially in the sports world, it's, it's small. So um, definitely. That's great. So give us a fun fact about you. Fun fact. Okay. Um, I guess while Minnesota is on my mind. Um, so I was the first person that was hired out of state for my position with the wild. Um, but I am just as proud as the fact that I was the first intern in my position to never fall on the ice. Uh, and that comes from someone that's never ice skated and is incredibly uncoordinated. Um, <laughs> we did all, you know, the pregame ceremonies, intermission activities, postgame stuff. And not once did I manage to fall. And it is a badge that I wear proudly. <laughs> now, what, like, were you in shoes or were you in? Business professional for game day. So, yeah. Um, so, okay. Yeah, I ditched a lot of pe- A lot of people. Class, but it comes comes with challenges. A lot of people bite it still? Um, so most people that I work with are like game day employees and stuff. So they're local, you know, Minnesotans. Not used to it. So they are sprinting in tennis shoes <laughs> and like, it is mind blowing. I definitely, at least for the first month, you know, you stick to the board, you don't pick up yeah. your feet, you kind of shuffle. But um, by the end of the year, I was picking up my feet and obviously like not as quickly moving as everyone else, but was rather independent with it. So the growth was, was great to see. (laughs) Oh, that sounds great. No, I, I thank you for joining me. Hopefully we can help you get some exposure, get you back in uh, the saddle soon with, uh, with the team, you know, with minor league baseball today, um, announcing that, that it's out. Hopefully that'll, (laughs) that'll get, get back. Um, moving in the near future. So, but thanks again for joining me. No, absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to have me on.